Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. Um, I want to talk to you today about grounding a home. Um, I probably should get out my code book on this, but I had a guy uh, on YouTube say that he filled this with an inspector. Um, keep in mind, guys, that if you have two prong outlets, um, your authority having jurisdiction is something that you got to definitely keep in mind. So some of these jobs here with the EGC grounding conductor, can you deal with a, uh, a two prong plug? Um, 406 talks about, yes, you could GFCI, but I've already done a video on proving that GFCI on one side and then load side trying to protect a bunch of two prongs. It doesn't work. I still stand by that. If you're going to do that GFCI and make a cut the corner or you can't get into the walls, keep in mind that you should probably go to GFI in every single location, but also you cannot throw out the baby of the bathwater. You have to put in um, the dual function receptacle that is going to be GFCI and AFCI. If you can get in that plug, that's good, but you also have to keep in mind that 210.12 talks about, you know, if you're going 75 foot on a, what is it, a 14 gauge wire and then 50 foot on a 12 gauge wire that you have to have a certain amount of armor cable to protect it. Some jurisdictions enforce that and some do not. Uh, typically, I'll show you right here, I like to do origination out of the panel as much as I can. Baby blue, arc fault, all of this right here. And I installed this, so I, I prefer to have all of these guys already labeled, knowing where my circuits go. Because they're they going to hire us in the third phase. We already did lighting and now the service once the hot water heater was gone. And now we're coming in here to do EGC grounding. And so 250.130C talks about allowing yourself to come to different electrode parts of the house and do that. But if you don't have electrodes, you can't really do it. It doesn't do a damn thing. So you have to have two ground rods for 2019 of October of now. We're going to be going in about a few months to start studying the 2020. So by next June, we will have the 2020 code. But right now it's two eight foot ground rods, inner system bonding bridge bar, and down below in the, the cold water. And no, you cannot go to the sink anymore. Um, so the grounding has to be put in per 250.50 and 53. But once the electrodes are in, it makes sense then to ground the rest of the home. So we typically want to make sure that we do any lighting they have. That's fine. We get a look around the attic. Can we drill down later? Then we put on our service, make that new arc fault GFI, label everything, okay? And once we've come through and label everything, we sticker it so we know when we come to ground, you know, those areas to turn off those breakers to work, first of all. And second, we know that we've arc faulted and GFI'd appropriately to what the code says in 210.12 and 210.8. So you've got to keep in mind that when you're reading in 406 and 404 under switches and plugs, that if you go change out all your switches and plugs in the house, you have to arc fault and GFI. And so there is an exception in there that has not been updated. You can't just say, oh, I'm just going to GFI the beginning of the first outlet and the rest of the outlets are fine. But then you're not arc faulting. Because if you change out plugs based on copper, copper clad aluminum or aluminum, you have to GFCI and AFCI and label your panel per 230. I think it's 83 under identification. And so once you start labeling your panel and you know where all that stuff goes and your, your wires are the right size for the breaker and all that's been double checked, maybe your panel has to be changed. This one did, it was burning up and it was a split bus bar main. Yes, it fell under 240 under the six handle rule. I think that's 240.6 or somewhere around there. But still, it had no main disconnect. And so in the new code, we're going to a main disconnect outside. And then 230.70A1, it says, oh, yeah, we can have it, which it's readily close. As I talked to Fort Collins inspector today, and I said to him, it doesn't say five foot close or a nipple or back to back or side by side or here, two, two foot piece of PVC. But it does say in 230. I think it's in uh, 70 or 50, somewhere in there, it talks about, you know, if it's a service entrance conductor, it has to be protected by a certain conduit, IMC, PVC. It doesn't even allow you to schedule 40. It's a schedule 80 in the wall. So again, our main breaker is out here at 125 amp with 100 amp feeding this one. Well, why did I do 100 amp there? Mm, I just had an extra breaker on the truck that they sold me on another job, and 
I kind of felt like I'd like to kill it here and out there. It doesn't hurt, but you, you're supposed to have it outside. So if you have it outside, in the new 2020 code, they are going to that. They're going to make you kill this one. And this has to be out here. So no longer can we just have a meter cabinet with a bypass lever. We have to have the bypass lever, fifth jaw requirement in a combo unit with a main breaker. And then if you have a main breaker panel inside, well, you're supposed to have the MBR one or two clip here to tie down. This one I don't have to because this is the main, this is a sub panel now. But the minute I feed a sub panel into the house, whether it's 200 foot across to a garage, in an attic or a crawl space up into another wall or back to back like this two foot of conduit, guess what? This wire has to be four wire. Some of your old homes have an SE, this is an SER. So this right here is four wires, one, two, three, four. This separates our grounds and our neutrals on all sub panels. This is no longer considered our main panel. This is considered our sub panel. And so our grounds and our neutrals are completely separated. For one, because of arc faults, and for two, because of faulting out on the ground, they want it to go out to the main to grounding electrodes. So again, if my SEO guy's looking at this, please just discuss this as a two-prong uh, subject and um, EGC grounding conductor or just extra grounds for three-prong to keep it layman. But again, all of this ties into arc faults, labeling the panel service upgrade. Why? Because I had an old three wire coming in and I have to have a, I have to have a new four wire. Can I have an SE? I have to go to an SER. And so once I bring that all in, now I'm ready to start doing all my grounds. Because look in this panel. How many grounds do I really have in this whole, all these circuits? One, two, three, four, five. Out of all these circuits, I have five. And that's because these were ran downstairs with UF cables down in the crawl space years ago. I don't know why. But the bottom line is I'll be coming in here and poking up through the walls and putting my ISBBs everywhere down there and taking that to my electrode. Now, some inspectors will fail you and say, okay, oh, you got to protect a wire that's under number six because it could be cut out. Look, what's to say who would go down there and cut out all the NM cable without permission? I don't really know who would go down and cut out a THWN solid number 12, even if I ran a solid number 10. Basically, anything smaller than a number six bare copper this size, this fat one here, I have to protect it in a conduit. But in a crawl space in an attic, it's not going to get ripped out. So I think there has to be some common sense here. But one guy emailed me back and said, oh, the inspector said it doesn't work. 310 talks about... Um, your identification of conductors. I was like, I looked it up and I was like, that was just talking about insulation types. And I was like, that doesn't matter. Another guy says, oh, well, there's going to be, um, you're going to have heat displacement. That's not, you know, the EGC ground conductor is not in the cable. Really? The ground conductor, the EGC per 25122, that way toward the back of the code book, that's just a tattletale wire. That's a trace wire. That's a fault wire. It has nothing to do with eddy currents running on the conductor, especially with a multi-phase of a black, red, and white. You're basically telling me that this old SE cable, black, red, white, going to the cooktop, though it doesn't have a ground, that that is going to have some kind of heat displacement on the conductor? That's a bunch of crap. The bottom line is that the EGC ground conductor is good if it's in the jacket, if you can do that, no doubt. One, because of mice and squirrels chewing rodents. Number two, if you have a squirt, if you have a, a screw go through the wall because you're hanging a picture or shelf, sure, or a new HDTV, I totally agree with that. But if you can't get it in the cable because they won't let you get the home, then what are you supposed to do? I'm not walking away from a job. So again, keep in mind that having an EGC ground done correctly and grounding your metal box with a 1032 green screw, going to the yoke strap of your, your dimmer, GFI plug, switch three-way, four-way, whatever. All those devices being grounded, your light fixture, yes, make sure that box is grounded. Other than that, I don't see the difference of why you shouldn't do it. In fact, some of those circuits are so small, you could run a 14, uh, I would do a solid, not a stranded, but I would definitely do a green jacket. Why? Because they don't sell a, um, a bear, anything smaller than a number eight solid. But I would do stranded because it just coils up. But you can do that and staple it. 
Again, some of this is just going to be up to your interpretation, but hell, they let homeowners to get away with murder, let alone contractors like us. It's like we're just trying to make sure that people, when they touch a metal piece of equipment, they don't get shot. And that happens when the motor goes to fault on a dryer or a washer or a range or an element in the back of a freestanding um, a, a cooktop or whatever, a counter cooktop. So dishwasher disposal, we're trying to make sure that that, that metal is grounded to earth so it has a deferring, it defers the energy away from the person. But keep in mind that your GFCI protection better be a 0 0.007 milliamp on these breakers. So that's protecting it as well. So again, yeah, if you have a two prong and you have a two wire and you've already updated your service, go ahead and put in dual functions on everything then. There's nothing to say that you can't. You don't have to use just blues. The reason why I'm not is because I'm going in later to get EGC grounds as much as I can everywhere through this because this is a bungalow ranch style. So again, guys, you're, you should ask your authority having jurisdiction, but keep in mind some of this is flat out common sense as you other electricians. If you're a homeowner and some of this is just doesn't make sense to you, do not do the work, okay? Because you're going to sell the house and you're responsible for what you have done. Um, anyways, again, it's not that I'm against any DYIs that watch my videos, but there are some guys that say a lot of stuff on there, uh, on the Corium that makes sense. And I understand they have a good depth of knowledge and there's other people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And so I just don't want to waste my time. I am not a teaching school and YouTube is a free learning area for people, but it is not an electrical academy. So some of you think I'm very dogmatic and arrogant. That's fine. I don't really care, but I've proven my point. I've been in the field 20 years and I was an appliance tech for three years before this. So I have a very round scope after 23 years of understanding the field for residential. Um, again, if you guys are trying to do it yourself, that's what my videos were trying to help you out a little bit, but definitely for those other electricians, keep it simple, but make sure you don't just look at one little code article. You're looking at 406, 404, 210.8, 210.12, flipping over 250.130C, making sure all this makes sense also in 310. Yeah, and 250.122, what size grounding conductor, and then your electrodes in 250.50.53. All of that has to be looked at in the nutshell, not just one part. But here's one thing I like to say, just in case Pat's and Seymour, Cooper, Eagle, Levington, all you guys are watching my videos, why don't you come out with a two-prong tamper-proof receptacle? I don't understand. You get them in a three-prong, but you can't get them in a two-prong. So unless I get an EGC grounding conductor or put a dual-function breaker in the panel, I can't meet that part of the code, no matter what I do. But 406 says, yeah, even if you can't get an EGC and you put a dual-function and an AFCI in there, you still have to make sure you go back to a two-prong. But I can't get tamper-proof. That makes no sense to me. So my outdoor is going to be non-WR and my inside is going to be non-TR. I mean, why, why can't you make that? You know why? Because they want you to remodel. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully it'll help you out.